spoke with an Ethiopian farmer. This was the 2010 and 11 drought. Why is this happening? His response was, I think God is punishing me for not working hard enough. The new report from the Institute for Economics and Peace talks about how ecological degradation is deeply tied to conflict and the outbreaks of violence. One of the main findings of the report is that more than 1.26 billion people across 30 countries live in both extreme ecological risk and low levels of resilience. The report found that at the end of 2020, 82.4 million people were forcibly displaced. That's the highest number on record. You've written about how people tend to move when environmental pressures become too great in the past. Can you talk us through the complex relationships between climate change and human mobility? We know that last year, close to there were close to 31 million internal displacements on account of the impacts of disasters. And they are anticipated to worsen with climate change. So we would anticipate that we will see greater movement each year. And that's already comprising 75% of internal displacement compared to 25% on account of conflict. Climate change alone doesn't trigger movement. It's always in combination with other factors, unprecedented drought, food scarcity in the backdrop of conflict, uh, vulnerable groups facing even more um, precarious circumstances. And then you put climate change and, and um, increasing or more frequent disasters or more uh, severe disasters into the mix and you've, you've kind of got the perfect storm. So another way of looking at it is that climate change multiplies vulnerability. We often talk about climate change as a risk multiplier because very often it's the people who are already in marginalised or impoverished conditions who are going to be the worst affected. We need to have an eye on this now. This is not a future problem, it's a current problem and we need to be addressing it and planning for it now. Even if emissions were to stop today, we, we're still going to see worsening disasters for some period of time yet, and we know that there will be some displacement. If you look at some of the most conflicted countries in the world, they've got the worst ecological scores. The one with the worst ecological score in the world is Afghanistan. It's also the least peaceful. Back to 2019, the two countries in the world with most water conflicts were we, uh, Syria and Iraq. But what happens is you get the ecological degradation, you get to, it's a vicious cycle, so you get an ecological degradation. That leads to some conflict, okay? The conflict breaks out, and then eventually you get to a point where the state fails, and that's really where you get a tipping point. Syria, where you have this regional, multi-year, unprecedented drought, at least in modern times, that caused hundreds of thousands of people to move from rural areas into cities where they were a factor in the Syrian revolution, which then saw massive refugee movements into Europe, which contributed to the UK's exit of, uh, from the EU. Uh, so you were beginning to see the scale of these events causing huge displacements and contributions to conflict as well. Can you tell us a bit about what you experienced and, and what people living in these in these at-risk countries felt were their biggest challenges? I've seen wonderful examples of humanity and people just doing amazing things in spite of the fact that they have absolutely nothing. And one example was visited Ethiopia and spoke with an Ethiopian farmer through an interpreter as well during this, this was the 2010 and 11 um, drought. And uh, it was the third drought in less than a decade. Um, and I asked this elderly Ethiopian farmer if he remembered when he was a child ever having a drought of this magnitude. And there have been three of them now in less than a decade. And he said he could only remember one in his life. Um, and uh, he said his father took them into the bush and they lived on bush food and that's how they survived. Well, when I looked around, there's no bush left anywhere near this fellow because of population growth and development. So that key coping mechanism was gone. So I said, well, why now you see three of these events in less than 10 years, why is this happening? And his response was, I think God is, pun is punishing me for not working hard enough. So now he was going to work even harder, even though he had no, cons no responsibility for these developments. Um, which were very clearly linked to climate change, particularly the failure of the short rains, where here was this farmer who had nothing left and he was going to work harder.